In this video, we will see how to configure Exchange Server 2016 to accept additional email domains. All right. If you recall my previous video, in previous video, we have discussed one scenario where we have a domain called itsense.com. And when I say a domain or external domain, I mean to say your public DNS domain or the public presence. And when I mention internal domain, internal domain means your active directory domain. So just keep in mind external domain is your public DNS domain or your public presence, like domain name that you register and then you maintain your external or public DNS. An internal domain is basically, when I say internal domain, I need to say your active directory domain, which is for sure, if you have exchange, you have to have an active directory. So let's go back to the diagram. This is our current scenario. We have itsense.com internal domain and also we have an external domain with the same name itsense.com and we have our DNS server hosted with let's say GoDaddy. Now what we want, okay, I, uh, before that let me just recap a quick, a recap, recap quickly about the previous video. In this previous video we have seen that if your internal domain name is same like your external domain name, by default Exchange Server 2016 has automatically configured itself to receive emails from the internet because by default it is an accepted domain which is based on your Active Directory domain name there is default email address policy which is also based on Active Directory domain name and by default also there is a front-end connector which is, accept, which is configured to accept emails from anonymous users. So if the internal domain name is same as external domain name, by default your Exchange Server 2016 can receive emails from internal. In order to send, however, you need something called send connector. And in my last video, we did create one send connector called outbound email. And in that connector, we configured our exchange to resolve target domains by querying DNS for their MX records so that Exchange Server can find out to which email server he needs to send emails to. And once he gets an appropriate information from the target domain DNS server, uh, Exchange will send emails directly to the destination or target mail server. In this video, we have a little different scenario or let's see a little twist to it. Let's assume that that itsense.com has registered another domain name in this case abc123.com and we want our existing exchange server to receive emails for abc123.com as well, in addition to itsense.com. We are looking forward for, from our exchange server to accept emails for abc123.com as well as for itsense.com. And as, we, as I said earlier, the exchange, our exchange server in this lab has already been configured to receive emails from itsense.com. Now we need to do this part, which is 
configuring exchange for abc123.com. Our exchange server will be authoritative or authoritative for this domain means this email domain will be part of our exchange organization and as long as we have a valid recipient means a recipient with an email address based on this domain exchange will receive emails and deliver to those recipients just a quick recap we have three different networks here external dmz and internal external represented by 10 network dmz by 172 and internal by 192 now we have another change that we have instead of a traditional firewall now we have utm device utm stands for unified threat management device it's a good solution for small to medium sized business because UTM has many built-in functions to it. And one of the function is the UTM can work as built-in SMTP gateway. In my case, I'm using Sophos UTM, which was pre previously known as Astaro. So once as I have a UTM device over here, I would like to change the behavior of my exchange server that instead of sending email directly to the outside world I would like my exchange server to send all outbound emails to this SMTP gateway and as I said earlier we configured previously our exchange server this uh, send connector to use DNS lookup for target domain MX record. We need to change this behavior and configure it, it to, to use a smart host, which in our case will be the internal IP address of our UTM device. Uh, so let's get started. First thing first, as I said, we have a new domain abc123.com and for the new external domain we need an external DNS zone so in external DNS zone when we talk about Microsoft Exchange server what type of records or two type of records are very important MX records and host record as you can see this is an example of an MX record that we have created in our abc123.com external domain zone this MX record simply states that, that the server which was responsible for receiving domain uh, emails for abc123.com is smtp.itsense.com so anyone who will send email to abc123.com domain The emails will go to smtp.itsense.com. Well, this is half of the information. Now, what is an IP address of smtp.itsense.com? Because eventually, you know, name needs to be resolved to an address. That information will be taken from the DNS of itsense.com. So the, desk, so the source server who wants to send emails to abc.123.com after querying abc.123.com DNS it got this MX record which says that smtp.idsense.com is the one which will receive emails for abc.123.com or sorry abc123.com and then it needs to be resolved to a host name, oh, sorry, an IP address. As we can see, the host name here, it belongs to another domain. So then the query will go to DNS server of itsense.com, external DNS server. Here I'm talking about public domain or external domain called itsense.com and it will 
look for a host record that can resolve smtp.itsense.com to an IP address. Once the IP will be resolved, or so let's say once the hosting will be resolved, then IP will be uh, sent back to the source server. The source server will establish an SMTP connection over TCP port 25 with this IP address. And in our case, as I said, this IP address is basically assigned to our UTM device. Once again, here the 10 network represented an external network. So these external IP addresses are assigned to our UTM device. So once the email will come to UTM device, it will perform all the required actions like antivirus, anti-spam and all those things. And once the email is clean or, and legit and contain no harms, it, the UTM device with built-in SMTP gateway will forward those messages to our internal exchange server. This is how it will work. When we talk about MX record, as I said, MX records are the most important record if you want to establish a successful email communication. As an MX record, will have to have an associated host record that can resolve the host name which is defined inside MX record. Some, some organization may have more than one MX record. For example, if I go back here, we may have something like this. Let's say mail.go deadlift. What does it mean? Again, when somebody will send email to abc123.com, the abc123.com server will provide list of MX records. And here we have two MX records, one with the preference value 10, preference value is this number, and another one with the preference value 20. Always remember, lower the preference number, higher is the priority. Means, when these two MX records will be provided to the sender server, it will pick this record, the record with the lowest preference value, which in our case, smtp.itsense.com with a value 10. Why would you will de why we will define multiple MX record lab? Okay, that's for the fault tolerance. Let's say somehow SNTP.itsense.com is down, or say our network connections or, or link to the internet is down. In this case, if somebody wants to send email to abc123.com, it will try to establish connection with smtp.itsense.com because it has a lower reference value. However, as I said, the link is down or the server is down, so the connection won't be established. Then in this case, it will go for the second lowest value. It will look for another MX record with the second lowest value. In our case, in our example, it is the second one because we have just two MX records. So, what, as you cannot establish communication with smtv.itsense.com, it will go to the second MX record, which has the value of 20, and which says send emails for abc123.com to mail.girlgaddy.com. So, in this case, to establish, establish a connection or try to establish a connection to mail.godaddy.com. And if mail.godaddy.com is there and there is no errors of communication, no link failures, then 
connection will be successfully established and mail.godaddy.com will receive email for abc123.com. You may have something like this also. Sub scenario. Then in this case, what will happen? In this case, it will be like a load balancing. Sometimes this server will be selected, sometimes another server will be selected. Good for a scenario if you have two different links to the internet from two different service providers. So that one of the link failure won't affect your ability to receive email. And as long as both links are functional, there will be a load, there will be some sort of load balancing. So I think MX record is clear. Another type of record that I will show you briefly over here is SPF record. Sending policy framework or sender policy framework. This spam is the biggest problem nowadays, right? And sender policy framework basically address this issue. Uh, you can read more about it from the internet or some RFCs. However, just to give you a quick idea, sender policy framework record tells which servers are legit to send emails for that thing. Look, MX record tells which was which host or hosts are responsible to receive email for that domain. And SPF record will tell the recipient server that which server or server is authorized to send emails for that domain. For example, if I want to send email to hotmail.com, hotmail.com will check my itsense.com domain for SPF record. And in my case, my external DNS domain of itsense.com says, That all of my servers, which has MX record in my DNS zone, are authorized to send email. Okay, so let's say smtp.itsense.com try to send email to hotmail.com server. Hotmail.com server will check the SPF record inside itsense.com DNS zone and itsense.com DNS zone has an SPF record which says any server which has an MX record in itsense.com is authorized to send emails from itsense.com. So then what the Hotmail server will do next? We'll look for MX record and we'll find an MX record with a host name smtp.itsense.com and then it will resolve this host name to an IP address by querying for respective host record. Once this value will be returned back to Hotmail server, it will match that is it the same IP in establishing a CCP connection and if it is the same IP which in my case will be the same IP. It means this server is legit. Somebody, it's not, you know, impersonating itsense.com. Yes, this server is a genuine server from itsense.com and it's authorized to send to emails from itsense.com to outside world. All right, enough of the theory. Now let's go to our Microsoft Exchange server. 
and see how to define additional domain. So now we are in Exchange Admin Center. We'll go to Mail Flow, Accepted Domain, sorry, Accepted Domain. Currently I have just one Accepted Domain, which is based on my Active Directory domain name. And I do have an external domain, which is also say has the same name like my internal domain. So it is also absolutely fine because don't forget, I want to receive emails from abc123.com. Uh, I mean, I want to receive emails for abc123.com, but at the same time, I also want to receive emails for itsense.com domain. So I will keep this as it is, and we will create new accepted domain. Here I will specify the name, let's say abc123. Accepted domain will be abc123.com and it will be authoritative, means this domain is part of exchange organization, this exchange organization, and email will be delivered only to valid recipients in this exchange organization. Valid recipient means a recipient which has an email address based on, on this domain. Okay, so now we have created accepted domain. The next thing we will do is to create an email address policy and for this I will say ABC123 policy and I will choose here We'll select from this drop down an accepted domain. Yes, we want to create email addresses based on this domain and the format. What type of format we are looking for? Alias at console.com, for example. In this case, alias means the username. By default, it's username. It could be different, but it's fine with me. So I will say save and I want this. I want email addresses for this domain for all recipient types. Okay, it gives me a warning. And why is that? Because in CSS is unapplied. Under details pane, we have an option to, of applying this policy again. So if I click apply, this is the reason that why the warning appeared originally. It simply says if you have more than 3,000 recipients, then you should run a commandment from Exchange Management Shell. It's called Update Email Address Policy. In my case, I have much less than 3,000 recipients, so I will say yes, and policy is applied. Um, so we see, so this way we have created an accepted domain and email address policy. Of course, your SMTP gateway also needs to be configured to receive emails for this particular domain, which is abc123.com. Uh, receive connector has already been configured here. And another thing that we wanted to change was, we wanted to change the property of this outbound email send connector from MX record resolution to smart host. Because now I want my exchange server to send emails, all outbound emails, just send it to the smart host, and the smart host will do the name resolution not my exchange server. So I click that. I don't need authentication in my case. I'll click save and that's it. 
So this is what this is what we wanted to achieve. We wanted to create we wanted to create another accepted domain abc123.com. We did. We generated email addresses based on abc123.com uh, domain name, and we changed our exchange server to send all outbound email addresses to also outbound emails to smart host. And now that smart host will be responsible for DNS name the solution for target domains. So this is it. And thank you so much for watching this video.